Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thanks for joining me. We're going to talk about the Biden mandate and where we go from here. Please share this video. YouTube doesn't like these videos. It doesn't want to promote them because it's freedom, etc. But if you want to encourage like-minded people, I'm relying on you to do this. So please share this video and get this word out. I have some important things to share with you today. So please stay with me and I appreciate your attention for this video. The federal government is rogue. It has been rogue for some time. And now in order to distract the public from the dishonor with which this administration has acted and snatched <laughs> defeat from the jaws of victory with Afghanistan, they have so seriously mismanaged this thing. By the way, these same people who tell you that their patience is, is running thin with us and that um, we, the, the great unwashed, the great unvaccinated are apparently the reason for all the world's problems and that it's not about freedom. Yeah, these same people who are telling us all this, they left over half a million small arms to the Taliban, 63,000 belt-fed machine guns, 4 C-130s, 33 Black Hawks, 20,000 Humvees. They left an air force and an armory to a group of people who we were told 20 years ago were responsible and culpable for weaponizing commercial aircraft. No, they're illegitimate. This federal government is illegitimate and they are rogue. If you are one of these people who takes the position that you value our rights as Americans and you value your freedoms that were purchased in blood during the revolution, it's not too much to ask of you to stand on your principles and not back down. All the more so if you claim to be a believer, a Bible-believing person. And what I'm seeing right now is that a lot of people are being faced with hard choices, like put up or shut up time. Are you gonna live your principles? There are different ways, obviously, to try and get around the mandates. Religious exemptions, faith-based exemptions have been floated. But a lot of people are getting theirs denied. You got to ask yourself, am I willing to stand on my principles when it's inconvenient? We haven't had to do this here in the United States en masse for 150 years at least. I think there are many reasons for this. Frankly, I think that we have been faced historically over the past, my lifetime, several decades, we have been faced with prosperity and whether or not we were going to be faithful in it. And the remnant is always faithful. But en masse, people have, people have strayed. They have valued the illusion of prosperity over freedom. They literally have traded and sold their children's liberties for the white picket fence, the college degree, and the brick 1,700 square foot house, three bedroom, two bath with two car garage. Friends, if you think that watering the tree of liberty looks like you can still have your streaming services and live cushily in a nice, like, comfy home with AC. I don't know what delusion you're operating under. The people of the revolution, the greatest generation, they suffered far worse hardships than standing on their principles and squaring down an employer and saying, I dare you. They faced down the greatest empire and the greatest navy in the world. And how did they do this? How were they successful with this? Because they had principle, they had dedication, they were focused on self-reliance, and ultimately their reliance was upon God. This is a challenge of faith moment. If you are holding to your principles, particularly if your principles dictate that as a Bible believer you will not roll up your sleeve, if you give in, and you allow these people to stare you down and to back you into a position where you capitulate, it will not stop here. What they are trying to determine right now is how cheaply you can be bought. I'll say it again. They are trying to determine right now how cheaply you can be bought. How much are your principles worth to you? Are you willing to hide 
behind convenience and comfort in the hopes that you'll just be left alone. It never works that way, friends. And you know it in your heart. It never works that way. There's a lot for a person to think about, like where you're going to stand. Are you going to stand on your principles? But I can tell you this in my life. I've been faced many times with very hard decisions. And I don't get into my personal life a lot because I am not from a place where I think that that's appropriate. But friends, I, like many of you, have been faced with very, very hard things in my life. And I can tell you that when I've stood on my principles, even though it's cost me and even though it's hurt, I've emerged from it a better person. And I'll tell you why. In the grand scheme of things, I'm not afraid of these people. I'm not afraid of anything of them. I'm not afraid of anything of them. Because my destiny is in the hand of God. No one will steal one cent from me. No one will steal one minute, one second of my time, my destiny on this earth. Because the Lord God Almighty is more powerful than them all. He holds my destiny in the palm of His hand. It is from His hand I eat. Him alone will I serve, and to Him alone will I swear fealty and allegiance. <sighs> if in my heart I have come to a conclusion that I will not roll up my sleeve and I will not accept anything from these people, and in particular I'm not going to have my civil rights violated, and I'm not going to comply with it, and I'm going to come to the defense of my neighbors, there's nothing that they're going to do. Friends, you got to determine where it is that you're going to put your faith and your hope. And I want to bring something to a point here. It was a teaching that I heard from Rebbitz and Sephora Heller. A very, very wise woman. Just teachings online on YouTube, actually. But she highlighted a point about how a person's character is made. What their legacy is going to be. This means you and me. What is our legacy going to be in the future? How are people, heavy thing, how are people going to speak about us when we have breathed our last, maybe till we're 120? The big decisions in life are made by the accumulation of the small ones. Do you think that a man who is guarding the gulag in Russia or standing at the fork in the road between the living and the dead in Auschwitz who was deemed unusable and unfit to live, and who was going to earn their freedom, our bait macht frei. Do you think that the person standing there at seven years old saw himself as being a war criminal <gasps> and a perpetuator of genocide? Do you think that a seven-year-old child or a 10-year-old or a 12-year-old would see himself that way? Of course not. Then how is it that someone who starts out one way ends up being the hands and feet of totalitarian regimes. It's the little choices that add up. Are you going to give on this? What are you going to prioritize? What do you view of yourself? Are you just a ship captive to whatever prevailing winds of political correctness and socially accepted ideology is in vogue at the time? Or are you going to build your house on a solid rock? I will not allow anyone I will not allow anyone to intimidate me and get me to move from what God has shown me. All the more so somebody as unrighteous and as wicked as this federal government in D.C. Absolutely not. You're going to have to decide who you're going to serve and what you're going to value. Furthermore, the church right now in the United States is in retreat en masse. The church abandoned its calling to be salt and light. And this is not just like the little four corner steeple churches. I'm talking about the body of believers in general. They allowed their fear to speak. They forgot their biblical mandate of operating as salt and light and being love. Perfect love casts out fear. They operated in fear en masse over this past year and a half. Had people show up and basically were the mouthpiece of the Politburo. Fear, 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 shut our doors, shut our doors. So isn't it amazing? It's like conveniently that Romans 13 comes out whenever it's time to submit to authority, but conveniently that part about not forsaking the assembling of ourselves never came up over this past year and some odd with a lot of people. I'm hearing stories right now of pastors and people in leadership refusing to write letters for their parishioners who are requesting medical exemptions, or excuse me, religious exemptions for rolling up their sleeves. I got news for you. If your pastor 
is not going to respect your sincerely held convictions enough, you need to really consider whether or not you're supposed to be there because that's not leadership. That's a beta male getting his alpha on in the pulpit because he can't cut it in the world of real men. Spiritual narcissistic abuse is rampant right now among people who call themselves leaders in the church, but really all they're doing is exploiting people and perpetuating guilt and a party narrative. You need to decide who you're going to serve. And I'm telling you, like as someone who's made hard decisions on these things, I have left comfortable places, comfortable situations, comfortable jobs, etc., out of principle. It has cost me to run this channel. It has cost me to make decisions in my life that prioritized my principles and my values over convenience and over assured paycheck. But I'm here to tell you that if you pray it out and if you seek the Lord and He gives you stand firm orders and you go against that, you're not going to be operating where you need to operate. If, however, He gives you stand firm orders and you stand in His name, He will defend you, just like David going before Goliath. He didn't come with strength of man's weapons. He came in the name of the Lord God of Israel. You stand firm in your faith and don't be cowed by these people, especially some tyrant like Joe Biden. I hope it was helpful for you all today. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube, Patriot Nurse. You can also stay with me on Patreon, subscribe to our cryptocurrency and PayPal. I got links below. Guys, please sub the backup um, channel. I've got a link below. I added a backup channel. Please sub that as well because I want to make sure that we've got redundancy of comms. Friends, self-sufficiency is important. I've spoken about this at length. If you have not taken my class, please consider doing that. You need to be able to take care of your family's needs at home. It is long overdue for us to pull out of their grid in any way possible. You need to be able to resurrect these skills of old. Guys, I appreciate you. Please share this video. Please get this word out. We need to be encouraging people. We need to be standing strong and locking arms with people and not moving on principle. Do not let these people chicken you. Do not move on it. We are stronger than they are. They don't have enough door kickers. They can't do it to everyone. You've got to stand firm right now. Do not back down. Stand on your principles because you got to look yourself in the face at the end of the night and at the end of all things. Hope it was helpful for y'all. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.